You are listening to Body Banter, a podcast where we have conversations about the human body in all its forms and from as many perspectives we can find. We are your hosts, Shagun Yedile and Claudia Krebs. And we are professors of anatomy in the Faculty of Medicine at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Anatomy is for everybody and every body. And we're here to get the body banter going. We hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to Body Banter, a podcast where we explore the human body in all of its meaning and expression. My name is Claudia Krebs. I'm joining you from Vancouver on the unceded territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam nations. And with me here is... Shagun Yedele, and I am joining you from Kelowna uh, in the traditional unceded and ancestral territories of the Silks Okanagan peoples. Shagun, it's so nice to do this podcast with you. I am so excited about this project, and I am so happy that we're doing it together. Same here. I'm thrilled to be able to do um, a body banter podcast with you, Claudia, and um, I'm looking forward to exploring the human body as it relates uh, to, to anatomy, to medicine, to society, to culture, and in many, many different forms. So wow. thank you for inviting me to join you on the podcast. Well, thanks for being here. And when I look at the lineup of guests that we have for this podcast, I'm so excited to get to know all of these people and the wonderful stories that they will have to share with us about the human body. Everything from like cell biologists to people who look at it from a cultural and artistic perspective and everything in between. This was going to be really fun. Absolutely. And, uh, just the range and the diversity um, of meaning that the body represents to different people in different occupations, to, as you say, a cell biologist or an engineer or to um, an artist. Um, It's just fascinating to to contemplate. So um, I'm sure that our audience uh, is going to really um, enjoy the series of our podcasts, uh, just as much as we are enjoying or are enjoying it. And so, yeah, I look forward to all the different uh, people that we will interview. But uh, I guess we better start with ourselves. Yeah. So tell me about yourself, Shagan. So you're an anatomist based in Kelowna and the UBC Okanagan campus. Um, how did you get there and how did you become an anatomist? What's the journey? towards that that's uh, an interesting story that i'm not sure i i tell the story too often but um i was medically trained so i um went to med school and um after finishing medical school oh before then i have to say this because it's it makes the connection really clear that I, one of my favorite, that one of my best subjects in med school was anatomy. Um, um, also, I had an anatomy professor, which which is really interesting, and I think a lot of people can relate to this. That when you do have a favorite professor that you really look up to and and really really enjoy, you probably want to become like them. <laughs> and so, one of my favorite professors was my um, professor of anatomy, who was just the most brilliant human being that I've ever ever met, compassionate as well, kind, has all the time in the world for you. And he just epitomizes what you know, the kind of human being <laughs> that I want to be. And so uh, anatomy was one of the best uh, top topics in med school, as well as the fact that uh, uh, my training also was with human donors. And so I had exposure to, uh, to that. And and uh, that was really really fascinating. And as you know, um, I tell this story, and I and it's not because it's it's for any reason, but just because it's true that um, in my cadaver lab, I was the one who did most of the dissection. Um, you know, in fact, so much so that my colleagues acknowledged it in our yearbook that anatomy was fascinating, and Oyedele was the dissector. 
<laughs> so, so I did most of the dissection. That's just because I was really fascinated with anatomy. I wanted to learn a lot about it. And so, yeah, so I graduated and then practiced medicine for a few years. And, um, and to be honest, I wanted to specialize in a clinical discipline at the time, but I felt maybe, okay, as a stopgap, since I loved anatomy, really, let me uh, take up a master degree, master's degree in anatomy. And, and so I did. It was meant to be a stopgap, <laughs> but ended up becoming my career. Because once I started, almost, I mean, I could not, uh, I didn't want to stop. So um, I, I took a master's um, in anatomy and then went on for, to do my PhD um, in embryology, developmental biology. And, uh, and so that's how I got into anatomy. And, um, you know, I began to also teach along with my uh, faculty position first at the University of Ibadan in, in, in West Africa and Nigeria. And, and next at uh, the University of Wits Vaderstrand, uh, Wits for short in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I taught while also studying for my, um, for my advanced degrees. So, um, so I do have a long, long career, long history, um, learning and teaching anatomy. And yeah, that's, that's, and then obviously, um, I, at the end of my, when I finished my PhD, I wanted to move on and I sought opportunities and I, uh, it just so happened that right at that time, um, UBC was looking for an anatomy faculty here uh, at the Southern Medical Program in Kelowna. And, um, and I saw that advert and it was, to be honest, I felt it was written for me <laughs> because it, it just satisfied all my life experiences and my career experiences and, you know, brought it all together. And so, I did apply and yeah, long story short, obviously um, I got the position. And so I've been here at UBC since 2011. And so it's just over 10 years now. And yeah, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey, uh, teaching anatomy, ex- exchanging ideas with colleagues, learning more. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> well, Megan, I remember interviewing you for that position. I was on that search committee, which was really interesting. And when you say that you felt the position was written for you, when we met you, we knew we had the right candidate. And I felt sorry for the other candidates, but you were obviously the one who, who was perfectly made for, for creating a whole new anatomy program in Kelowna. Like that, uh, you were the pioneer really in that uh, program. So yeah, we're thanks, so glad thanks, that, that worked that's, out. That's, that's kind, but uh, yeah, it's 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 been really challenging in, in a few ways, but also rewarding in a lot of other ways. Um, starting off in a new anatomy uh, department here uh, in Kelowna from scratch, uh, you know, getting all the equipment, all the lab set up. Uh, so that was really really. It was, a, I mean, very, I'm very privileged to be able to be in that position to, to do that. And um, uh, till now, in fact, when I meet, I occasionally run into former students or, or, or who are now doctors or who are in advance, maybe in third or fourth year. And they tell me really with a smile that, oh, I still remember your teaching. <laughs> and I remember what I learned. It made a difference when I was in that rotation or when I was in that department. So it's really uh, very rewarding for me. It has been. Yeah, that's the best when you meet students and they remember you and you made a difference. I, yeah, I, I feel that too. So as an anatomist, what's your favorite body part? My favorite body part, and this is really, it's hard as an anatomist to choose because you seem to kind of, I can find something to say about almost every organ in the body. Um, but I would have to go with the heart. <laughs> I would have to go with the heart as my favorite body part, not because, not just because I teach it. I teach the embryology of the heart. I teach the anatomy of the heart. Um, I have a lab on the heart. So, <laughs> you know, I spend a lot of time uh, teaching 
the heart. But just because also it's it's something that starts out so simple, incredibly simply, uh, the heart in the in the fetus, uh, and then develops into this complex three dimensional structure that is uh, literally has a life of its own. To be honest, you know, literally has a life of its own, and um, and and is able to um, you know co- combine uh, physiology with uh, biomechanics uh, with uh, electrical activity, um, you know, it just kind of brings together a lot of of, of the different processes and, and things about the human body into that one organ, and so uh, that's that's why I would say that the heart is my is my favorite favorite body organ for sure, and it's obviously one of those body organs that we cannot do without so um not to then speak of its cultural and its emotional connotations you know that um that that exists in the larger culture but yeah speaking more medically and anatomically there's a lot um, of things going for the heart that that's really why i love i love to speak about the heart i get that the heart's really cool what's your best memory about the human heart from an anatomy or clinical perspective? Oh, man, that's, whoa, that's, that's a fantastic question. Um, My best memory, um, maybe it doesn't relate to the heart on its own, that is particularly, but I do remember when I started out in clinical practice that we, we had a patient who came in for a prostate surgery in those days, those earlier days, it was not an um, endoscopic surgery. It was actually an open surgery. So it lasted a long time. I assisted, I assisted the surgeon in the surgery. Uh, it was an elderly man. I think he was about 79 years of age. Um, and I remember that his family members, I mean, like four of them showed up adults now. So this was someone who's really, really loved his family was all of, all of them were there. And then um, post-surgery, I was on call and I got called in that the, the, the patient's heartbeat was irregular. Um, that his, his heartbeat was irregular. And I got there and his pulse was really like 40 this was really bad <laughs> so um and and so i uh, you know instituted emergency procedure what happened was that he was bleeding he was bleeding at the upside and and so we, we had to put in the emergency you know stop the bleeding um just you know put up like four or five liters of fluid um and get the surgeon, you know, and, and, and the reason that is my favorite story is that the, the patient survived, uh, the patient survived and, and the, and the family was so grateful. I got cards, you know, thanking me, you know, and, and so that's, I'm always, I always remember that as one of the times that, you know, a patient could have, their heart could have given up on us. Uh, and, but we managed to stabilize the patient and actually correct uh, and, and obviously the patient was transfused later on, but yeah, so it's not really about the heart, but it kind of related um, to, to the heart function. And, and, um, and so that's one of my favorite stories. Maybe there are others, but this one stands out for me. That's so beautiful. And it really goes to what you were saying earlier, how the heart combines the physiology and, and all of that in such a beautiful way. And I think you captured it there, right? So person was going into shock due to the bleeding at the op site and, um, and the heart was trying to cope with it, right? And then couldn't cope with it anymore and needed intervention, which you were able to do. So what a beautiful story. Wonderful. What's your least favorite body part? It has to be the appendix. <laughs> it has to be the appendix because it really doesn't do anything. Although I know um, histology, when we study histology, it's got lots of uh, immuno, immune function, like it's got a lot of immune cells, it's got pears patches and lots of lymphocytes. 
but I think it's more trouble than it gives, more trouble than benefits. So um, in the sense that um, it, people get, it gets inflamed, it gets infected, and people need to, you know, um, it can become extremely painful, can be gangrenous. So that's why the appendix is a lot of bother. It's, <laughs> so it's my least favorite <laughs> organ. <laughs> So funny. Um, I'm going to send you an article that was just published in the anatomical record on uh, what's the title here, a review of the function and evolution of the sequel appendix. And it's written by Heather Smith, who is, of course, the editor in chief of the anatomical record. And um, anyway, so maybe you will discover maybe I should a read liking that, yes. for, for the <laughs> appendix with that. But I'm with you. It does seem um, to cause more trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thanks Shagan. that that was super interesting thank you claudia all right so it's my turn to ask you questions claudia um and as someone who is a huge fan of yours um i i kind of just brag on you to students um all the time about the lovely work you're doing and just such how such a lovely human being you are. And I tell them stories about, you know, my history, my, you know, in the, in the, in the faculty of medicine and what a pivotal person you've been. And so, so I want to ask you how your journey began in anatomy. Um, how, how did you become um, an anatomist? Well, Thanks for that question, Shagan. And I don't know like how to speak after that introduction, I feel like, <laughs> but thank you. Well, I think my journey into anatomy is very similar to yours, right? I also went to med school. I also loved anatomy. It felt like the first really hands-on thing that we were doing. You know, it wasn't all theoretical. We were actually, it felt more clinical, more applied and everything. I then started teaching anatomy as a TA. Um, for many years, and I loved it. And I loved the teaching, and I loved the anatomy, and I loved explaining concepts. And it really became um, this beautiful interaction between the fascination for the, the human body and how to convey that to students. My peers at first, when I was a teaching assistant, and then sort of as a postdoc, I was still uh, doing it as a teaching assistant. And then when I got the faculty position, I was like, this is amazing. I get to do this work that I really enjoyed the most out of all of my training um, as, a, as a profession now. So I had, you know, similar to you, I did my med medical degree, I did the research, I did the postdoc and the theme throughout that entire journey was teaching anatomy, uh, coupled with curiosity. I was always asking questions. And as you know, in the clinical world, um, there's not a lot of room for questions. Um, it's all about answers and uh, sort of clinical uh, standards and things like that. And I was always asking, but why? And how does this work? And um, And so I quickly saw that as much as I enjoyed interacting with patients, I wouldn't enjoy not asking those questions as much anymore. So I knew that the academic pathway was better suited for me and that I could use my curiosity to ask those questions and instill that curiosity in students uh, to really ask about the, the function of the, the human body and how our human form um, makes us who we are. Right? We are defined by our anatomy. The fact that we have upright gait, that we use our, our upper limb um, as a sensory motor tool, the fact that, um, you know, just how we walk, how our digestive system works, and all of that defines us as humans and our interactions. So I'm, I continue to be completely fascinated by that. And I think that's what really kept me. Um, anchored to anatomy as a discipline. That is so fascinating. And I like your um, quest for knowledge, you know, the thirst to just keep asking why, you know, and question. And, and sometimes in the clinical environment, um, 
the the hierarchy uh, is a bit better nowadays, but it's still there where that clinical hierarchy um, prevents you from questioning um, decisions or questioning um, certain procedures. And, and, and um, whereas in, in research and in teaching and in, in academia, that's actually the foundation of what we do. We ask questions and uh, want to uh, explore. Um, and so, yeah, that's such a fascinating journey, um, Claudia. And um Maybe then to ask you in all your experience and all these years, do you have a favorite body part? What would that be? You know what my favorite body part is? It's the brain. Of course it is. You know, I I mean, you said your favorite body part was the heart, which I understand, but the heart really only works for the brain, right? Like that's really what it's there for. And when you look at the anatomy of the heart, you can see that the first vessels that come off the heart, they go directly to the brain. And even during embryology, as you know, the most oxygen-rich and nutrient-rich blood goes directly to the brain. So, yeah, I love the brain. Um, It's such a fascinating organ. It's such a mystery still in many ways. And in the end, it defines us as a species. Um, Our incredible ability to um, to build communities, to build social interactions, our incredible ability to um, tell stories and have a shared history, our ability to think, to plan for the future, our ability to do complex calculations that put people on the moon. Um, all of that comes down to our human brain. Um, my daughter's really interested in um, in space, and she wants to be an astronaut. And she just read the biography of Katherine Johnson, who was one of the um, calculators, right? Like, that was a job, to be a calculator. So she did the math to put a man on the moon. And um, that was her brain, right? That was able to think and to calculate and to understand the physics of planet Earth and the physics of space and of the moon, to do the math, to make sure that the landing was safe. That's amazing. And that's all just in our brains. Excellent. Um, abs- I absolutely agree uh, that the brain is fascinating for all those reasons you mentioned. And um, just for consciousness, um, you know, all of these other things, um, sometimes even the subconscious, but where, where we would perhaps link these days with the limbic system, where you intuitively know something, you know, without, without really thinking too much about it. And so, yeah, I would agree. Um, however, the jury is still out about whether the brain or the heart is, uh, is the favorite. (laughs) Just joking. Do you have a least favorite part of the body? Afraid you'd ask me that. So it's a bit of a toss up, I think, between the intestines, which I don't enjoy much, and toes. I just don't like toes. I don't know why. It's not my thing. Um, Intestines, I think, comes really from the clinical background in surgery. Anybody who's ever been in a surgery where they cauterize intestines, there's nothing that smells worse than that. It's really bad. And um, so I'm not a huge fan of intestines. I appreciate that mine are healthy and working and doing their job. But yeah, (laughs) I don't know. I think it's similar to you. It's like the appendix, right? Like you chose one part of the intestines for me. It's basically the whole thing. I'm not a fan. And, um, and toes, I don't know what it is, but when I remember once somebody came into my office, a colleague and was like, Oh, I think I'm losing my toenail. Can you help me? And I'm like, Oh, I don't think I can look at this. And they laughed and were like, but aren't you trained for this type of thing? I'm like, I might be a long time ago, but I, I, I don't like severed toes. Actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, it might go back to a clinical experience as well. As a medical student, I was there and assisting in a surgery where they amputated a toe. And I had to hold the toe 
And then, you know, one minute it's part of the body and the next minute you're just holding it. So maybe it comes down to that. Maybe that's the core reason for it. I was, yeah. Oh, that's so horrible. Um. It was horrible. (laughs) I think there was a a, a cancer or something on that. I don't remember even what the medical history was. I just remember holding the toe. Yeah. Oh, I can understand. Well, to happier matters, uh, do you... Yeah, and I forgot to ask this. I'm going to return to it. Um, do you have a favorite story about the brain um, that or maybe something peculiar or favorite uh, anecdote about the brain that you might like to share with us? A really tough one. Um, no, I don't have a beautiful surgical story. I don't have a clinical story, really. I think when I think about the brain and, you know, how much it means to us, I think about patients who've had a stroke and have lost part of their brain function and how deeply it affects them in their personality. Actually, I remember a lecture a long time ago, and it was by an orthopedic surgeon, and he was going through... Uh, the trauma of somebody who had been in a devastating car accident and he showed us multiple fractures that that person had had and he went through this this entire thing you know how he fixed the femur and how he fixed the pelvis and you know all the things the different techniques for setting the bones and the surgeries and everything and and it seemed like such a good news story because in the end all the bones were fixed and you know the person regained mobility and then he ended the lecture with Uh, unfortunately, the patient sustained substantive damage to their frontal lobe in the collision and their personality had changed so much that they, um, their life was so changed. Their, you know, partner broke up with them and, you know, it had all these devastating consequences. And, um, and that was the end of the lecture. He just left it there, right? Like after go taking us for an hour and a half through the setting and, (laughs) you know, the treatment of every single fracture. Um, and it really, you know, brings home how how important this brain of ours is and how, you know, much we have to take care of it. Because once you have severe damage, it's not easily fixable, right? And um, yeah, so, and I Absolutely. think the the flip side of that, I think, has been watching my children grow up and watching their brains grow um, Mm. and develop and everything, everything from the first time that their toes went down, which told me that their corticospinal tract is fully myelinated and they'd start walking soon. And they did um, to them understanding language, acquiring language, acquiring dexterity, acquiring reasoning skills and you know all of those things that has been super fascinating to see excellent that's such a warm and uh, powerful story thanks for sharing those personal anecdotes and uh, I, I, I completely relate as as someone who's raised kids kids myself to say it's you that's one of the most uh, I don't know it, you know, it almost defies um, words, heartwarming, really fascinating, rewarding experiences of of seeing a young human grow from such really defenseless, helpless little thing, and slowly acquire independence. Um, you know, and as you said, that comes a lot to. I mean, it owes a lot to development of the brain it's a really healthy functioning brain and so yeah that's that's really really wonderful um and 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 so so thank you for sharing that um i think that that's really all we have um to discuss in this introductory um podcast about um both myself and claudia and i don't know do you have any last things for for listeners to look forward to in this series again i just can't wait to meet all the people on our list and yes. interview them and find out their stories about the human body and um and how they relate to it and what that means um thank you for being on this journey with all of us 
this is going to be great. Thank you, Claudia. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the podcast series as well. Okay, everyone. Thank you. And uh, see you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Body Banter. We are Claudia and Shagun. And we look forward to having you join us for more conversations about the human body next time.